This is the Invincible Podcast on TV Podcast Industries. We're back talking about the season two mid-season finale, episode four. It's been a while. This was all you? Bringing me here? Yes. The Thraxians told me that they needed my help. They do need your help. Why? It's complicated. Come with me and... Now, why would you lie to me again? You killed thousands of people. Yes. Why would you think I'd ever want to see you again? You called Mama Pet. Mark, I need your help. I can't believe you put them up to this. Made them lie to me, too. Just listen. I don't have to listen to anything you say. Mark, look, I made a mistake. And I've thought about you every day since... A mistake! Son. No, you don't get to call me that anymore. What do you want me to say, Mark? You could have started with, I'm sorry. You know what? Don't bother. All right? It wouldn't mean anything anyway. I hope you like it here with your new friends. I guess they don't know you the way that I do. Welcome back, fellow Guardians, to the Invincible Podcast on TV Podcast Industries. I'm one of your hosts, Derek, and we're here talking about the mid-season, sort of, finale for Invincible Season 2. Uh, it's been a while. Uh, I'm joined by my co-host here. Yes, it is I, Chris. It has been a while. It's been a whole seven days. It has. <laughs> I Again, I don't know whether go, like, all Las Vegas, like, let's get ready to rumble, as this was a epic battle episode or more in lean into the it's been a while with the really bad 90s rock (laughs) or like alt was it christian rock no stained it's been a while or was that creed yeah i meant to look that up chris uh last week because i think we said creed was it's been a while yes yeah no oops we got that wrong yeah it is stained it is uh much like puddle of mud they are one hit wonders mm-hmm. and much like the this episode, they are poof gone. Gone. Gone and over. Yes. <laughs> it's over. We're at a halfway point already. Yes. 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 So before we get into the episode, what do you think of this as a release schedule for uh for Invincible, Chris? We had thought that we were gonna get all eight episodes uh weekly at the beginning of the year, and then they kinda said you might get something by the end of the year. Then they did the Adam Eve special and then announced we were only getting four episodes this year and four episodes next year. How do you feel about it? Okay. So as a, as a podcaster who has a life outside of podcasting <laughs> Look at um, you. and a career uh, and a child now, mm-hmm. which is the other part of my life, it, it's good. It, it, it is a, a fair break. It's like five episodes. Well, technically it was five episodes, but four episodes. Uh, and then they're going on hiatus for let's say three to four months maybe yep. um hopefully maximum seven months mm-hmm. um and then come back with another four that's fine like i think that's a, a, a it's a fun break in between um but as a fan i do hope that it doesn't bite them in the ass it probably is the best way of putting it okay because there is so much content out there mm. Um, and you really, they're, they built a lot of momentum over the last four weeks mm-hmm. where across social media, just general buzz is invincible Fridays. Yes. And like there is people talking about the episodes and they do have more and more. I've heard it bleed into other pop culture and g- gaming culture podcasts that I listen to. Mm-hmm. Where people are talking about, have you seen the last episode of Invincible? Oh my god, it's so great. Mm -hmm. Blah, 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 blah. Like, just, it's bleeding into the standard vernacular and subculture, just kind of discussions. Yeah. And that's about to drop off now. Yeah. Uh, Whereas, typically, if you looked at how Loki went, you look at Mm -hmm. how other typical shows go, they build that fervor over time. You go from the hardcore is usually knowing about it on launch day, Mm -hmm. being there 
to people who have already watched it to then it going into more casuals to hyper casuals. Yeah. Yeah. Then, and by the time it's at towards the end of the, the season mm-hmm. and it's coming to the finale, it's everyone's caught up with it because it's kind of bled over that population gap and target demographic. Yeah. It's similar to season one, in fact. Season one yes, had exactly. pretty poor viewership for the first episode until about seven hours after it aired. <laughs> <laughs> and then the scene of Omni Man destroying Guardians of the Globe took over the globe. Yeah. Everywhere was beaming it. Everywhere had it as uh, had it as a clip that they were sharing with all their friends. Oh man, you gotta watch this show. And suddenly Invincible took off. And now when Invincible came back for its second season, apparently it had three times the viewership. Yeah. of the first episode of this season than it did last time. I suppose the uh, the bigger question around it is, not should they have released all eight of them now, which they couldn't have done, is my understanding. Should they have waited till next year to release all eight of them back to back? Because I think the reason why they don't have the other four episodes is because they weren't ready to go and they wanted to deliver something in 2023. Yeah, it's a hard, it is a hard question when it comes to this because you do have... There's just so much out there. Although I do question if what the the landscape is next year. Mm-hmm. Looking at like if we look at the Marvel shows, I think we're down to about two Marvel shows, maybe mm-hmm. I think it's three, in 2024, yeah. Yeah. maybe three, but unconfirmed. Mm-hmm. Um, like because Daredevil is back on hiatus mm-hmm. indefinitely for temporarily now. Um, and then if we look at, so we know we got boys Mm -hmm. season four coming but we don't know anything about gen gen v season two it hasn't even started filming yet or or anything like that yeah that's probably more of a 2020 early 2025 it will be yeah yeah um at this point so we've got the witcher there's a few things there but from the gastro feast buffet (laughs) that we've had this year yeah it will be slightly slimmer pickings next year, I think. Yeah. Just based on because of the, the, the sag uh strike, the writer's strike, everything is bumped mm-hmm. a lot. Personally, I would have waited. Uh, just That's my own, mm-hmm. but I suppose, again, I, I'm also, as a viewer, very happy they did it this way. Absolutely. Like Because I, I got to see five amazing episodes of TV. Yeah. Spoilers of my opinion. <laughs> um, what about you? What do you think? Should they have waited or should they have... I'm really happy with this. I wish it had come out a week after Gen V, not the same day as Gen V, because I think there was so much stuff going on that lots of people didn't get around to that first episode of Invincible on the first day. It did have great ratings over that weekend, but you set up that habit of come along on Friday. Um, you're setting up that habit only th- for only three weeks, and one of those is going to be the day after Thanksgiving. So, um, so I don't know. I think just moving it on one week, I love the idea of breaking this into four episodes and four episodes spread weekly. I think that worked out really well. I think last time, Invincible Season 1, the first three episodes were released on the first day, uh, like yep. the way Prime Video do their usual um, releases. So I think this works better, four now, one a week, and then four next year. I think they kind of did it because they promised their fans and their fans are very loyal um, that they would have mm. something in 2024 and they didn't want to just leave it with Atom Eve. They wanted to continue the story from season one this year. So I'm really happy with it. And I think you've got a great point there, Chris. Uh, the landscape's going to be much clearer for Prime Video next year. I think if I'm if I'm right looking at the schedule for next year, Prime Video have a pretty set for the year. They've mm. got most of their big shows have an entry so you said you said gen v isn't coming next year but the boys season four is coming next year yep. leading directly from gen v so lots and lots of stuff out there for prime video and it'll be much clearer because netflix just cancelled four more shows uh for their quite uh big genre shows again um and uh disney plus have pulled back on loads of their content uh for next yep. year and um yeah so i think i think this uh, it, this is the right decision yeah and it, look like you said a primer set prime are primed for next year <laughs> yeah. because you also got wheel of time yes. season three and correct me if i'm wrong because this is a you show mm-hmm. rings of power the next season we believe so yeah rings of power is filmed in the uk written in the uk yeah. and wasn't affected by the initial strikes um so they only had a very small amount of filming left when the strikes did impact the production so yeah we're hoping that we're going to see uh, rings of power season two next year yeah. yeah. So like that's even there you've got f- something every 3 months. Yeah. 
exactly like strong like contenders every three months exactly um so yeah it, they're they're primed for some good stuff but they've already given us some good stuff yes they have in this week's episode yes they have let's get into talking about this episode of invincible uh, show of course created by robert kirkman Corey walker and ryan otley uh, the episode this week was written by helen lee uh, she wrote the adam eve special which we'll be talking about next week we will and this episode was directed by Jason Zurich. This is the first episode he's directed of Invincible, but he did direct nine episodes of the wonderful Star Trek Lower Decks and also worked on The Boys Diabolical as well. So another show that we've covered here. Yes. And I will quickly say, because we have discussed Lower Deck before on this, The Boys absolutely love it. Yes, we I do. I had yet to have watched it. I have binged all seasons. Yes, he has. Now. I am up to date in Lower Deck. <laughs> I am on the deck of Lower Deck. Um, Fantastic. I have just not seen the crossover <gasps> on Strange New Worlds yet. That is the only one that I've missed with uh, Boimler uh, uh, so far. But I was thinking I might just do it as a kind of end of year pre Doctor Who piece just to kind of get me in that quirky mood <laughs> before going into Christmas. But yeah, you know. Fantastic. Well, anyway. Doctor Who comes back next Saturday, Chris. So you have uh, three days uh, to watch okay. the crossover episode with uh, Strange New Worlds and um, Lower Decks. It's really, really good, especially if you know Lower Decks. But okay. especially if you know Strange New Worlds <laughs> and you okay. like Star Trek. Uh, yeah, go watch it. It's only an hour. It's really good fun. Yeah. I'm on it. Excellent stuff. Chris, do you want to tell us what they gave us with your synopsis for Invincible Season 2, Episode 4? It's been a while. It's been a while. Sure. Mark meets his father on the planet Thraxus. Nolan had tricked Mark to go there to help the people. He introduces Mark to his unnamed half-brother and his new wife, Andressa. He explains to Mark that the planet is in danger because his people, the Vulgemites, will find him after he's left his post on Earth. When they learn he has a child with a lowly Thraxin, they will execute the kid and punish the people for it. Before Mark can agree to help the residents, three Vulgemites arrive and take the fight to them. Mark protects Nolan's new family against one of the most powerful warriors, Lucan, but only escapes when his father intervenes, ripping out Lucan's guts. While his father confronts and crushes the head of another Vulgemite, Vigar, Mark has trouble with the final one. Nolan tells Mark that he needs to want to kill her or he'll never win. Mark takes his father's advice, but while distracted, he is ferociously stabbed. Nolan crushes the final Vulgemite's jaw, but has his back snapped by Lucan, who he had left for dead. Following the Vulgemite attack, the majority of the Thraxians are dead, and a Vulgemite ship arrives to recover Nolan and their injured warriors. With his final words before being taken for execution, Nolan tells his son to read the books he wrote. Still incapacitated from his wounds, Mark meets General Krieg. He is told he must now take on his father mission. He must return to Earth to prepare it for the Vulgemite takeover. If they find any resistance when they arrive, they will obliterate millions of humans. Meanwhile, back on Earth... Debbie makes a big decision with the help of a super tailor art. She chooses to redirect all of Nolan's funds to the Spouses of Superhero Support Group and go it alone, breaking Cecil's hold over her family. Elsewhere across the city, Adam Eve battles Kilcannon, but after endangering more human life, she returns to her family home dejected. Donald had learned that he had died previously. He's not a robot, but his body is certainly stronger than a human. Finally, Mahler learns his injuries from helping Angstrom Levi means he'll always know he is the original. He creates a new clone, but after treating the clone as a slave, the clone poisons him to take back the title of Prime Mahler himself. What a great joke to end the episode on with the Maulers. Uh, It really made me smile (laughs) When, when they finally resolved who is the true number one clone who's the true original i have a way now and then stupidly the brand new king muller uh treats his clone as the clone and gets poisoned for it (laughs) and now they will never know exactly yeah because the next time the clone get clones himself all of those memories go to the new clone and they have the same fight once again uh which is great and a nice little gag to to end this half of the season on definitely but should we get into our discussions our top points for this episode absolutely yeah point number one nowhere nolan 
what happened to Nolan Grayson after season one? Um, so we saw him right at the end of last episode, uh, that little surprise moment as uh, Mark has been brought to the planet Traxa to save its uh, its citizens. And it turns out uh, it was a bit of a lie um, to get him there. So this is really interesting that the reason why Nolan wants Mark here. Yeah. It's something so left of field, you just don't think. Mm -hmm. Initially, you you, you are of the opinion, oh, he just wanted to get Mark away to either kill him Mm -hmm. or to try and once again persuade him to the side of the Vulture Might. Mm -hmm. Or, well, hold on, has Nolan actually become supreme leader of this world by kind of invading and taking over based on, like, subjugating all the population? Mm Mm-hmm. And slowly you learn that's not the case. He is, he's fallen in love yeah. with uh, one of the insects. Yeah. But they do have a weird short life span. Yes. So, well, definitely one of the aliens has fallen in love with him. Yes. It's Nolan. You never really know what his sure. actual feelings are. And her lifespan's only a year. So <laughs> he's like, well, that's a blip of an eye. Maybe I'll put up with it and marry her. Um, she'll be dead soon, basically. Um, yep. but it, could, it could be that. But we do see the flashback to Nolan's trip after leaving Earth at the opening of the episode. So while he doesn't explain this to Mark, this is going on in his own mind. He's remembering what happened after the last fight. Um, we do see how much it's affected Nolan having to fight yeah. with Mark. Um, and spectacularly animated. Absolutely. Some of the, tr- like some of the, just the, the space scenes mm-hmm. just, I, they, they really took the animation up a notch. It was fabulous. Like it's cut directly from the last scene we saw with Nolan and Mark on earth where Nolan saying to him, Everybody that you know is going to die. What will you have left? And Mark says him. And that's his moment when he chooses to leave the planet, leave his post, leave his mission. And I love how he leaves the atmosphere and we see the blood that's on his hands, on his gloves from Mark, just burning away as he leaves the atmosphere. He almost goes straight back to normal. He goes back to this perfect Omni-Man in his perfect outfit and then travels galaxy by galaxy throughout um, throughout his travels all the way across you know we see some really interesting stuff in the background we see you know um planets that are cracked apart we see a planet with two suns i think that's a star wars reference isn't it i i I (laughs) assumed but again you just never know like they it's probably a nice joke easter egg Mm -hmm. because they definitely do a lot of those in this like obviously seance dog we've already discussed that last episode yeah yeah, but yeah, no, I, 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 I would assume, but again, you just never know. I, mean, I would always feel a planet with two suns is Tatooine, so that that's that's the reference that they're taking from the fact that he's sitting there watching the two suns as well. I thought was uh, I thought was that's the nod to Star Wars. Um, there's also a planet that seems to have an armada of ships um, about to attack it as well. As Nolan just flies past and pays absolutely no attention to it. <laughs> <laughs> just I don't know, maybe it, it's just a quick seen so i'm not a hundred percent sure that that's what was there i watched it a couple of times and i was trying to catch is that definitely a planet under attack because he just goes straight past it eventually gets to the black hole and watches it suck in the space around it and then makes his decision that he's going to allow the black hole to draw him in uh before he sees the thraxon species the the uh, thraxons aboard a ship about to be drawn into the black hole and then he decides to save them yeah and again, the, the the black hole bit is because vulture mites are notoriously hard to kill. Yeah, like invincible. They are pretty, imp- they are pretty invincible. <laughs> yeah, it's, where have we heard that before? Yes. Um, that's where the title card should just go. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, so I I do like that, and I do like the composer chose a great score for that moment. Mm-hmm. The animators made space and the the that aspect of tra- traveling through time i don't mean through time but you know what i mean like the spanning of time because we see his beard kind of his he becomes more grizzled his cloak becomes more tattered and it's just over throughout time it just gets he becomes more bedraggled kind of thing yeah. it's just kind of very just crusty 
if you really want to call it <laughs> Well, yeah. Um, yeah. But then just, yeah, and then decides to lean in and has a moment of, again, weakness, we could call it, being a hero, mm. saving the Thraxians. Yeah, yeah. It's like Mark has rubbed off on him. Yeah, exactly, yeah. exactly, yeah. yeah. And, and you're totally right. Leonard Cohen underscores uh, any time that somebody's having a real crisis of faith. Uh, choose a Leonard Cohen song, and it's perfect uh, for the background to it. So, uh, great choice there by the by the, uh, the the music producers for the for the episode. Uh, but it leads to him back on Traxa, Mark here with him, and the reason why he wants Mark here really is because well, he's done it again. He's impregnated a uh, a member of a planet that he's uh, that he's arrived at, um, which is completely against the rules of uh, of the Vulturites. Um but he does confirm something for this episode, different to last episode. Vulturemites are able to mate with other species that are similar to them, like humans. So him mating with Debbie was actually not a bad thing, or at least that's what he tells Mark. Yeah. It's more, it's the keeping the bloodline pure mm-hmm. aspect of it. Yeah. Um, so I wonder whether he's just trying to convince himself that because Mark is practically a Viltramite, they, he looks very similar to Viltramites, he has the same kind of powers as them, then that that's okay. Is he still trying to convince himself? Is he still trying to convince Mark that he's on his side because he wants something from Mark? He wants him to help protect his new family. Yeah. I, I think it's more, uh, it's a little from column A, a little from column B. Mm-hmm. It's like, you could probably pass for a Viltramite if we give you a Tash. Right. Um, like, is, is, is that is that going to work? Speaking of the mustaches, Chris, I finally heard the backstory behind that. Okay, I haven't. <laughs> so apparently, um, Robert Kirkman, his father has a mustache, and Cory Walker's father has a mustache. So when they were coming up with the creation of Mark's dad, they put a mustache on him. Because, hey, dads <laughs> have mustaches. And then they created the Viltrumites, and all Viltrumites have mustaches so he's like suddenly became canon that that's what they all have because my dad had a mustache <laughs> and well all the female vulture must shave uh, maybe uh, <laughs> <laughs> they they have their own five o'clock shadows you just have to kind of they just kind of whip it off in one fell swoop there you go <laughs> i look that this was just it's an interesting thing when you start putting it down to why he wants Mark, there. Mm-hmm. It's like again, I haven't, I haven't reached out to you to ask forgiveness. I'm not doing that. I've reached out to you because I need something from you. I need you to protect your half brother. Exactly. That's it. Yeah. I don't know what I'd say to that. <laughs> it put Mark. It's kind of putting Mark in a Sophie's choice. Well, do I kind of? Yeah. Um, but it's not his Sophie's choice, and straight away, Mark just says, "F you." It's not. This yeah. is nothing to do with me. You've made this decision once again. You make your bed, you lie in it. And throughout this episode, while Mark does what Mark does and tries to be the hero, he doesn't actually give Nolan an answer. He never once says to him, I will join you, I will work with you. He's just about tempted, just as the Viltrumites arrive, but he never says to him, I will help you. He never forgives his father to that extent. He just continually says F you to him. Um, Is it just me, Chris, for this episode? And we've watched all this episode. We went straight from Gen V onto. We know this is a very adult orientated show. Not not an issue with that. But it seemed like there was a lot more swearing in this episode than than we'd seen in any any of the previous episodes. I think I counted nine times where Mark is telling um, his dad just to F off. Probably, yeah. It felt like it was there more anyway. Maybe I was just noticing it more because of the vitriol that's behind it from Mark. I think that's I think that's what the writers do on this show, which is they rather than using a more boys Billy Butcher style where mm-hmm. swearing is used as just it's a just a different form of grammar. It's just what what <laughs> what swear word can we input here that sounds cockney and slang? Exactly, yeah. yeah. And just, it's just It's there for the joke. Yeah. Yeah. Whereas this, I think, is used, language is used a bit more, is used sparingly because it is still, it's a superhero world and they're, they're, they're superheroes and they, they, they live, Mark wants to live up to the kind of piece. But when they, they use language to underscore, heated moments to underscore emotion. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah. Um, and in a very emotionally charged episode, mm-hmm. I think it makes sense to probably have it more. Um, 
it, or it could be just they had a quota for this half of the season and they just, oh, God, we haven't used our spare quota. <laughs> Hold on. Uh, put an F there, a shit there, uh, a C word there. Oh, God, perfect. There we go. No, I, I think you're right the first time, Chris. I think yeah, the, the underscoring of these moments with Mark and his dad, it is like so perfect for the conversation. Um, yeah. It works really, really well. Uh, anything else about the, the opening moment where we find out where Nolan has been and how he got there? No, I just do lo- love that his brother's purple. <laughs> it's just what happens when you mix a pink and a blue. Well, yeah, exactly. But still quite humanoid in comparison yes. to uh, he didn't get much of his mother's ant features. No, no, no. Insect. Don't call her an ant. My Sorry. God, man. Insect creature, creatures. That's so taxiest. <laughs> Taxist? Taxist. Yeah, it would be. Taxians. Taxist, yeah. Racist, there we go. Thraxist. Creaturist. Yes. Yeah, anyway. Anyway, <laughs> moving on to our next point for this episode. Mm-hmm. Point number two, Debbie's decision. Yeah, I think it's important at this point in the series to talk about Debbie because she's really is a major character this season who's going through yes. all of her own things. I just think it was really good that they have this close out of that story um, where Debbie's going to move away from this. You know, we talked about it last week. Uh, Nolan left her behind now Mark's left her behind and she couldn't seek any solace with the um, spouses of superheroes group um, at all. They kind of kicked her out when they found out, uh, well, one member of them uh, kicked her out when they found out that uh, that Nolan was uh, her former husband. So um, we start we start out with her aimlessly walking through the streets again. She has nobody really to depend on. Um, she has nobody to talk to about this. And she eventually reaches Nolan's grave. Um, I loved this scene. I loved her effectively shouting at Nolan, you know, why did you do this? Why did you choose me? Is it just that you wanted to hurt somebody? Why did you do it to me? You know, I thought it was really, really emotional. What they've done with Debbie as this, I think we discussed it in the last episode, Mm -hmm. the first episode, I can't remember. Um, When you got an actress like this, Mm -hmm. of this caliber, and you can, re- and again, they Kirkman has said he'd want to do this when he, him and the rest of the writers in the writer room, they were like, there's a lot of potential where you can really expand upon when you got this, an actress or an actor who can really upgrade someone's writing and, or just a storyline, yeah. just through their own performance. Mm-hmm. That's what they've done with Debbie. Yeah. Debbie's storyline initially was just in, even in the comics was always just a bit like eh, she's she made the mistake she she was she's Lois Lane but if Lois Lane was like blind to Superman being a Nazi mm-hmm. um, and this what they've done in this episode for me is really just kind of went no 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 look we are putting a line in the sand on the grief moment mm-hmm. she has gone through her five stages of grief yeah and she has come to the end of that journey and what is going forward is new debbie yeah and art helps her which is great from that storyline yeah uh like seeing art again um especially because we we saw so so little of him in season one yeah absolutely absolutely played by mark hamill of course uh so having mark hamill here with sandra oh and sandra oh you're right chris has been fantastic this season uh and last season but i I just love this arc i love how much she's she's giving to it she she feels like a a really rounded character but um but are telling her that he's seen her for who she is that she's always been the strong one nolan's been running away saving other people around the world or getting on other missions around the world. And Debbie's been the one holding the whole house together, holding everything together. And Ars is telling her, you never needed him. You, this is just yeah. a moment when he's gone now for good. So now you move on with your life. Um, so I yeah, really, really like that. Same. And again, like, like I said, it's just kind of, it separates the, the, the Debbie life, but also we do see her confront Cecil. Mm-hmm. And we jokingly said that this is the mid season finale. Mm-hmm. This is just because again, it's four and four. But it does, they have done a lot here in this episode, and this is one of the storylines yeah. where they're like, we're going to close off this bit. Mm-hmm. Debbie is telling Cecil that it's done. Like, his hold over their family isn't gone, mm-hmm. including that of Mark. So when Mark does come back, he will have that Cecil versus his mum fight, because his mum's going to be like, no, you don't need to 
do stuff for them. We're, mm-hmm. we're out from the, their thumb. And Mark being Mark is going to be that. But I'm a superhero. Yeah. I want to be part of the Avengers. I mean, the, the Guardians of the Globe. Uh-huh. Um, That's going to be a choice for him, definitely. Yes, yeah. exactly. Yeah, And it's interesting, isn't it? Because we have seen um, Debbie now at home. She didn't go back to work or she went back to work once and was sent home from work. So this is about how does she support herself? She's been supporting herself based on the investment from Cecil coming from Nolan, effectively. Mm. Um, that's been taken care of. Mark in college, her home, while she got herself back on her feet. This is underlining it going, she's now back on her feet. She's moving on. She clears out all of Nolan's stuff and uh, and drives away, effectively. So um, so it seems like she's made this big, strong choice at this mid-season finale. Yeah. So yeah, no. I thought it was a, I thought it was yeah. a really good moment. Uh, great, great stuff here from Debbie. Uh, let's go on to our third point from the episode. Most of it, obviously, is taking place on Thraxa. So the third point really is Mark's new mission. It's what happens on Thraxa, the massive battle with the three Viltramites to begin with. Um, Mark is sent off to mind, uh, I guess, his new stepmother, Andressa, and his new yeah. uh, half brother. Literally that. It's, yeah, his his dad got remarried, mm-hmm. and he is now he's now got a yeah he's got a new family. I'm just trying to piece it together. It, is, is it roughly a year since the first Bad season? That. Because Bad that. we definitely saw a six month time jump, and we saw another time jump through the summer as well after they graduated high school and went into college. So it's definitely been about a year since Nolan left Earth. And their lifespan is about a year. So yeah, that would be about right. So yeah, I guess I guess that's about the amount of time that's happened here. And yes, Nolan's completely set up a brand new life because he's not able to go back to Earth now. Um yeah. he left his position, he broke up with uh with Mark's mom, and they had the massive fight in Chicago. So he's not gonna go back to Earth, but he's set up a brand new life here. Yeah. And if you again one thing to point out, which is his brother is now what? Less than a year old. Mm. And you look at the size of that baby. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. That baby is much like its mother and ages quickly. It's an interesting idea, isn't it? Because you have the Viltramites themselves who live for thousands of years. Mm-hmm. And you have a species that grows and matures and dies within a year. So if the baby's about three or four months old and already that size, when will it get to full maturity? And when will it get yep. to the same kind of age as Mark, I guess, is, is what you're wondering. Uh, that's got to be scary when you're uh, when you're the older brother and, and your younger brother is aging up to be your <laughs> age much quicker than you did, I guess. Yeah. Um, but all this kind of leads to the, the I want you to look after them. Mm-hmm. Like, Mark, you have this one task. Do this for me. Because the Vulturemites are coming. Yeah. They, 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 we did see these three Vulturemites last episode mm-hmm. as they destroyed Alan. Yes. Um, and they arrived. And they are here. And all hell breaks loose mm-hmm. for the Thraxans and across Thraxus. Um because it is like Vulturemites take no prison. They're basically the they're Superman. They're the Sentry. They're what name another like they're Apollo. Uh, like all of these very very strong superheroes mm-hmm. who fly fast are in, somewhat indestructible, and invincible. Yeah, that just wreck shop, and you see it here. Like Vulturemite versus Vulturemite, Nolan versus the other Vulturemites. Mm-hmm. It gets vicious. And this is the way I'm very... We talked about the animation being beautiful Mm -hmm. in Nolan's space journey. Here, it's vicious. Yes. The bone crunching. Mm -hmm. The I don't know if you go back. When he slices Lucan Mm -hmm. um, with his hand. Cool, by the way. But anyway. (laughs) um, The sound... Mm-hmm. Is like literally like someone got a, 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 a tore a steak and then had like out their hand in a bowl of spaghetti and recorded it. <laughs> I, it could have been that could have been the foley artist, Chris. Uh, yeah, that, that's that's the replacement they could have done. Uh, it's kind of a move of um, of 
Omnimans uh, to rip open people's stomachs and pull out their, yeah. their guts inside. It's kind of one of his go-to moves. But um, it is really interesting seeing Vultramites fight against other Vultramites. Obviously, last season we saw Mark versus Omniman. Omniman uh, really well trained. Mark brand new to superheroing and using his powers. Here we've got three full powered Vultramites effectively versus Omniman. While Mark does stand up and try to protect um, his new sort of family. Um, he isn't really able to stand up to the Vultramites. Without his father coming in and stopping Luke, and he'd be dead. Without yeah. his father coming in and interrupting the other fight that he has with the other Vultramite, Mark would be dead. And along with that, Nolan also takes out the third Vultramite by crushing his head between his two hands. Yep. Mark has potential. Mm-hmm. But again, he's only half Vultramite. And Nolan calls this out. Yeah. You, he says that you you're stronger than you know exactly, but it's that kind of it's how strong is he going to be? Yes, I think you're right, but there is that offer there from Nolan that if he trains Mark up, even with the power that he has, that he could probably take on Vultramites in the future. So it's the training yeah. is more the issue with Mark. He's new to this. He's still learning his powers, still getting better, but he's definitely not ready to battle any Vultramites here. No, he does give a fair go at it like towards the end of the battle he is doing well he hesitates Mm -hmm. and then that's what what really it's that hesitation to kill yeah it's nolan's big lesson to him is if you want to be a superhero viltramites will kill you because they have no such willingness to not kill people that's that's they will go the full extent of their power and you're holding back um and then that that's that's where we end. The week. Nolan has his back snapped. Yes, he does. Yes. He is kind of being take carted away. The Vultramites come and mm-hmm. collect Nolan and leave Mark and tell him to go back, take up his father's post. Well, that's massive. That's a huge yes. moment. They've also killed pretty much every one of the Thraxons on the planet. Um, we, I guess, his, his half-brother and stepmother are safe in the back of that cave but everybody else that was in the city looks like they've been killed so um yeah it's just so clinical of the viltramites yeah okay so they have three warriors that they sent to this planet to find nolan and uh, and make him and, and punish him for it but here they are arriving taking all of the all of their warriors back um effectively putting them on stretchers to bring them back so it looks like they're all going to be healed um I would guess, because it looks like nothing's really killed the Viltramites, even though some of them look pretty decimated. Um, you know, as, as I mentioned, one of them had their skull crushed, another yep. one had their insides ripped out, and the third loses her, her jaw. So, um, and Nolan has had his back broken, but Nolan's going to face execution uh, back on the Viltramite homeworld. Um, but yeah, the big moment here, the big twist is that General Krieg is now telling Mark he has to take on the mission of Nolan. Um, there's no choice here. There's no discussion like None. Nolan trying to convince him that he has to help the Viltramite race take over Earth now that he's learned that he's a Viltramite. This is, no, no, you are a Viltramite. This is what you're doing. And if you don't do it to our satisfaction and you don't kill a couple of humans to get them on side to be ready to go, we will execute millions of humans to get them to go our way. So... Those are the only two choices. Either you save a couple of lives by getting them all on side, or we destroy millions. Yeah. And that, that, that's, they, there is no if buts or maybes. There is no, ah, uh, sure, they wouldn't do that. Look at what Nolan did. Look at what they just did to the Thraxians. Mm-hmm. It's going to happen. So it's a, it's a, it, it, it's in, I was going to say cliffhanger, but it's not. It's, it's essentially, <laughs> A cliffhanger was what happened with Alan the Alien. Mm-hmm. This is more just a portent of the future. Yeah. Like, it, it's like Mark now needs to limp back through space. Mm. Six days of travel. That's if we, if he can do that. Uh, make sure, is there any ships left or anything? Yeah, like that? exactly. That's only if he has a ship. He's been told it's uh, millions of light years back um, yeah. if he tries to fly on his own. Um, so it's going to be interesting to see how they. Send into the next episode, mm. into the the next part. Like, did is it months later? 
uh, and it's going to be that SpongeBob SquarePants pants kind of uh, kind of title card. Days later, okay, <laughs> and it's just Mark still limping through space. Yeah, um, is his half brother and stepmother alive? Mm-hmm. Like, did did they survive or were they found too? You you start getting like these questions. The one I did enjoy is the 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 comment from Nolan. Read my books. Mm-hmm. Tell him, read my stories. And those stories are we have seen were just left out on the porch yes. for charity by Debbie. So, nope, those stories are gone. Well, luckily, hopefully, <laughs> there's one or two more than one copy of uh, Nolan's books yeah. in the real world. I, I presume so. He was he was an, an author, wasn't he? So uh, I presume he sold a few a few of them. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Uh, so hopefully, those are the instruction manuals that that Mark might need to uh, to help stop. Uh, the Viltrumite invasion, I guess. Yes. But interested to meet General Krieg here. So this seems to be some kind of leader of the Viltrumites, um, or else he's just as interested in this mission as every other Viltrumite. We're going to take another planet. You're going to be going back there. Off you go. But I just thought with with the title of general, you'd assume he's pretty much a leader. He's your General Zod. He's your your standout bad guy. Mm-hmm. Like, But he also looks pretty cool. Absolutely. And we do have to call out who did the voice for General Krieg, don't we? Go on. It's Clancy Brown back again. Um, we knew he'd appear sometime in this season. Last season, he uh, he was a more central character, um, and we've just seen him in Gen V, uh, of course. So great to see Clancy Brown getting another uh, voice role for this season of uh, of Invincible too. I I just think they they a everyone likes Clancy Brown, mm-hmm. but he also does supposedly he's great on set. He's a good fun, and then just he does have he's like Mark Hamill. He brings a certain Je ne sais quoi to your your nerdy uh, show. Mm-hmm. So yeah, always good to have him there. Yes, always good to have him there, and uh, just so unusual to have him at two shows back to back like we've had him this time. So uh, great stuff. Uh, a couple of other things uh, probably to talk about from the episode. Adam Eve does have quite a big uh, moment in the episode, and given that we're going to be talking about the Adam Eve uh, special um, next time. Mm-hmm. I think we should probably talk about her uh, her battle with Kill Cannon. Yes. Um, and what leads up to it, as a bit. Yeah, she's relearning her journey as a superpowered individual. Um, and, yeah, you, you see basically her go, oh, no, I don't need to follow your rules of society. I can just help people do mm-hmm. things myself, yada, yada, yada. And we do learn that she, through skipping the right channels, through not going through proper code... Uh, people die. Mm-hmm. Things happen, and she takes that like badly. We also we see her parents, who are not nice people. Mm-hmm. Um, well, definitely her dad and her yes. mom. By the fact that she doesn't ever defend Eve yeah. is also pretty bad. Yeah. Um, Kill Cannon, by the way, uh, is from also the one hour special that we'll discuss next week. Um, so mm-hmm. there, there's a kind of callback if you want to call it that as well um which is <laughs> or a fun. call forward since we haven't covered it um yes. kill cabin kind of is her um nemesis even though he's terrible she's way overpowered for battling against kill cabin but tends to fight against him quite a lot yes um yeah so even in the uh even in the atom eve video game um there's lots of references to her battling against kill cannon why he keeps coming up with with plans that she automatically stops um he's secretly in love with her maybe maybe he could absolutely be that Chris. yeah um but yeah it's a hard learning point for her it is and it will set it up for where she goes next um season like or in the second half of this season, mm-hmm. will she go back to the, the the guardians or will she join the guardians? Really, maybe. Um, will will she just disappear back to her treehouse? Will she move back in with her parent? Like, they they it's it's a question to see where she goes because she's not going back. To, she's not in college mm-hmm. at this point where the rest of them all are. Yeah. Um. So yeah, it's, it's going to be interesting to see. And when her father kicked her out, he said, "You have to learn that." the things you do have consequences you need to have 
the knowledge to use powers you can't just use powers um and until you learn that don't come back so um we do see her really alone in this episode the fact that she's left the guardians of the globe the fact that uh the other the other friends are in college and mark's gone um she's really alone here she has nobody to talk to again and her parents have kicked her out so um so yeah i think that's the major struggle and then in this battle with with kill, kill cannon in the city um this feels something out of the boys here where an accident an accident happens off yeah. the back of a battle between two superpowered beings here in this case a couple fall into the water in their car they're trapped in the car for quite a long time the only difference here is we don't exactly see whether they die or not we see eve saving them bringing them out of the water and calling for paramedics and then it cuts to her going back home um the following day pretty much so um I don't know. I, I kind of read it that the two of them were dead, um, but there was no confirmation from the actual scene itself. No, but uh, yeah, it feel the same way. Yeah, but still, it would impact Eve um, pretty heavily, given uh, that this is something that's caused by her trying to again try and use her superpowers. Yeah. Excellent. Anything else about Eve, Chris? No, no. I think I think again we'll discuss Eve at at, at length at uh, uh, at uh, ex nauseam. Uh, next episode mm-hmm. uh, no not nauseam it, it's a fantastic episode but we'll, yeah. we'll discuss it in depth next week uh no let's move on to the next note the the next character who's really we need to talk about here we do need to talk about donald don't we <laughs> yes our colson our the, the colson of this world absolutely um just because he finds out here that he died um sacrificing himself to take out nolan um mm-hmm. at the end of last season or yeah the, the big big finale of last season um but for him it was just something that debbie said to him the last time she saw him that has been playing on his mind she was kind of wondering why is donald here says it out loud and suddenly he's questioning hang on a second why would she think it's weird that i'm here and goes to call in on debbie's house and then sees the exploded house across the ro- road and um slightly unbelievably finds his pair of glasses <laughs> only yeah. mangled um i've dropped a pair of glasses before and they were smashed more than those i swear and so he can identify that they're his own glasses though yeah well that's you have to because apparently he know it'd be like if, if you wore like a certain type of aviators only mm-hmm. every day of your life yeah you'd know those are yours even if they were and i do take it from donald's character design that he has just one outfit, including the yes. glasses that he wears every day. Probably a wardrobe full of exactly the same outfit. Um, exactly. Yeah. He is Colson. <laughs> Pretty much. <laughs> Pretty much. But um, he returns and actually sees the video footage of himself dying in this explosion. Yep. And then goes to a bathroom to um, do the test to see whether he's a robot. Learns that he isn't. But the knife bends in his arm, even though he's got blood coming out. So yes, he's an android. Is he cyborg? Depends on what you would call it. When you hit bone and uh, or lift the the central part underneath your blood, okay, uh, and it bends a knife. Usually, it means it's some form of you. You're a cyborg or an android or uh, something. Um, it's definitely yeah. something. Um, I wonder if it's some form of. Uh other type of superpower that he has um you know we have lots of people here that uh that probably wouldn't be killed by it by being stabbed um so i just wonder was it something like that but interesting maybe if maybe, he's a- maybe. They, they may change it up they may do different things mm-hmm. they may um but uh, what you're again, saying I is in the comics the character no is an no sorry <laughs> what i'm saying in the comics is i can't remember okay <laughs> um uh and I'll, I'll, there's no point looking it up because i'm like oh it'd be nice kind of be a nice surprise right so what i'm doing with this show and as well at the moment i'm just like i'm not gonna look things up again okay because i've read it and i'm just like wait and see (laughs) all right well then you're not gonna like my last question uh for the episode chris is there anything from the comics that you remember that that you want to talk about uh that that should have been in these four episodes or the the only thing is that the 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 vulture battles were a lot gorier okay it's hard to say, mm-hmm. but it was. Um, and then you do get more information on the Thraxians. Okay. Just it's a bit more time on like their them as being like they have a short short lifespan, mm-hmm. so their empire's role 
like super fast. Mm-hmm. And because Nolan is thousands of years old already, they just make him emperor. Right. They're like, you're not going to die next year. Mm-hmm. You're in charge. Fix us. Make us. You are powerful. You can help us. Very good. And then there is a kind of him falling in love with um his his new wife. Mm-hmm. And there's a bit there. And I think I understand why they kind of just cut it down, really. Yeah. If that makes sense. Yeah. Just because, again, you don't need that information for this story. Yeah. And I think I think a lot of it's probably is told there in shorthand uh, yes. in this episode. But they're kind of cracking through uh, the issues, as we've said, uh, in this show. They don't do an episode per issue. They do about five or six issues per episode. So, yeah. uh, and sometimes way more so um so yeah so if they if they cut little bits uh they, they get the story across though so very interesting no, 100%. good stuff then overall chris what's the final thoughts on invincible season two episode four it's been a while what do you think of it can't praise it enough really um I, it, it's a t- it, it's hard because I, I feel like i'm just uh, every week saying the exact same thing i'm like it's great animation it's great fun it, it it's a, a fun story it's, just, it's the comic books come to life um, in animated form, uh, mm-hmm. but for adults, it, it was always an adult comic book. But it's just, it, it it is that way, and they're doing the stories that I never thought I'd see come to screen. But at the same point, they're doing them justice, mm-hmm. and it's comedic where it needs to be comedic. It's depressing when it needs to be depressing in terms of emotional. Mm-hmm. Sorry, um. It throws the right beats, and also, if you take this as a mid-season finale, as a like back when they used to do those twenty-two episode, see twenty-nine episode seasons, and you'd have a mid-season break of a couple of weeks, Mm -hmm. this is this. This is what they've done. They've kind of really set it up. We're like, do you know what? This could be interesting. You want to know more about what's coming? Mm -hmm. So, like, watch this space. Um, and yeah, I, I just think it, it, it's fun. What about yourself? What do you think of this mid-season finale of Invincible? I absolutely love this. And, and to your point, Chris, you know, there's a big difference between an adult cartoon and a cartoon made for adults to me. You know, a, an adult cartoon traditionally is it's a cartoon where we've thrown sex and language and a little bit of a, additional violence in. Think of Harley Quinn, which I absolutely yeah. love. Don't get me wrong. But it's just it's just a cartoon you wouldn't show to a kid because it's not yeah. it, it has taken it to the extreme effectively. Whereas Invincible is a cartoon made for adults. The content of the episodes, the the moments that the characters are allowed to breathe, like Debbie in here, like Adam Eve in here, what she's going through, what all of those characters are going through, and the moments that they allow the story to breathe. That's why this is a show made for adults. This this is not just throwing in stuff into a children's cartoon to make it adult. This is absolutely spending time on the writing, spending time on the things that are important uh, for the story. So really, really enjoying it. I think they're doing a great job uh, with this season. Um, there's so much in these four episodes. Mm. And, you know, one of the frustrating things, we did get these episodes in advance and we did watch them in advance, as we've as we've said, of, of release. Uh, one of the frustrating things is they only gave these four episodes out for review. And a lot of the reviews that I saw were negative about the fact that everything wasn't tied up in these four episodes, as if they didn't understand that not only are these four episodes just half of the season, the story itself runs on for longer. So not everything is going to be tied up in the four episodes. It's like they watched it as a movie and went, oh, but I didn't get the resolution to the story, therefore it's not worth watching. This show is totally worth watching, like every other good show. Um, I really, really enjoy it. I'm, I'm, I'm sorry that we're not going to get more until the other half of the season, but um, but I'm, I think they've done a great job with the four episodes that they've had. Yeah, no, and look, the, the people who stupidly complain about four episodes of an eight-episode season mm-hmm. not closing everything down. Yeah, yeah, th- those are people this who have no patience. I was just quite surprised by some of the people I saw it from. That's all. Um, yeah, yeah, same. I saw those same reviews, yeah. and I'm just like, yeah, okay, were you having an off day? Mm-hmm. I just. Like I get it, but no, that's that's not how content works. Oh, just not anymore. Sorry, uh, that's no, just no. Like at least Empire Magazine own it and just go, we don't like animated shows, so yeah. therefore we're never going to give a score for an animated show above seven. 
grant. That's fine. <laughs> but some of the outlets I was just quite surprised with. Um, yes. But good stuff. We will have one more episode of Invincible to go uh, when we get on to the Atom Eve special, which will be our next episode of the Invincible podcast. Uh, but we do have some feedback on last week's episode. Uh, first up, we got an email in from Coffee and Vodka, who says, Greetings, fellow WTF defenders. Was not expecting to end an episode of Invincible feeling sad and perplexed, but here we are. Debbie's ostracized, Mark's confounded, Rex remains a dick, and Alan, we hardly knew you. The only bright spots being Mark's supportive friends and a wonderfully dippy shapesmith. For now, though, it seems best to hold my thoughts until we know more about that mile-high cliffhanger and, of course, a respectful moment of silence for our noble Cyclopean friend. May he rest in animated peace, an effective and affecting episode that, while not making it to Fry's dog level, was still very good at being surprisingly tragic. 4.5 Allen wrenches, Debbie Downers and Tentacle Toon Times out of 5. Peace and take care. Coffee and vodka. Fry's dog level. That's uh, Futurama's uh, greatest episode um, because I think everybody cried at the end of that episode. Yeah. One could argue one of the greatest animated episodes of any TV show ever. Yeah. Like that was, it's definitely up there in my top five of, you just had to say fried dogs level. And I'm like, oh my God, yeah, that episode. Mm-hmm. That, I remember that episode. We all cried. And yes. that brings back. <laughs> <laughs> um, comparatively to like Tintin or mm-hmm. Rescue Rangers or any of the other an- animated shows you watched as a kid, very <laughs> few bring back to that level. Yes, absolutely, absolutely. Uh, so while it isn't up there um, for Invincible, uh, a very emotional episode in episode three, uh, definitely. Definitely. Thanks, Coffee and Vodka. We also got some feedback from Dr. Bob Phillips, who had this to say. Well, I didn't see that coming. This is getting to be a bit of a refrain for me, isn't it? (laughs) I didn't expect so little gore and such a delicate treatment of intimacy. Nor did I expect the safe sex question from Amber or the speed the mobile phone signal gave out. Perhaps they're powered by plot more than physics. Maybe. I didn't think we'd leap into a visual reading of a comic page with our fave dyslexic cyclops and was gutted, as was he, by his <laughs> ultimate end. And I really didn't expect Omni-Man to return with a new planet to lord over. I thought we'd be seeing a multiplanar Angster and Levi, who I missed this episode. But overall, I loved it. Thanks, Dr. Bob. Yeah, Angstrom. Like, we've got two two episodes with his appearance, mm-hmm. and they've kind of had to leave it for the last these. I think maybe he's the... The best way probably I think of is if Thanos is the Vulgemites, they're endgame bad guys. Mm-hmm. Um, This, like, Angstrom is somewhere kind of just below that. He's mm-hmm. not... He's not... At, like, but he'll be back... Because, again, he's this season's big bag, where exactly. the Vultramites are more the ongoing stories. But yes, I, I would I would agree with that. I think Angstrom Levi is, is the character that will be back in the back half of uh, of this season. Um, but he's pulled together part of his plan, I guess, from his traveling around the, around the plains and learning uh, of those places where Omni-Man has been beaten by the residents there. What can he take from them to take back to our plane, back to, uh, back to our... Um, what were we calling it? The Prime Universe, right? Yes. Yeah. So, uh, so I think that's where that's where he's been. But yeah, no, we didn't see him this episode or the last episode. Just saw the uh, the Molars this time. Uh, no Angstrom Levi post credit scene this time. No, but we'll probably we'll no we won't probably we will hundred percent see him next this season next half of the season. Definitely, definitely great stuff. Thanks so much for all the feedback. Uh, make sure you email us with your final thoughts on the season uh, to feedback at tvpodcastindustries.com or pop on over to our Facebook group at facebook.com slash groups slash TV podcast industries. There's a spoiler post up for episode four, and we'll talk about uh, your feedback on that episode when we talk about Atom Eve next time. Yes, looking forward to it. And of course, if you want to send in your thoughts about Adam Eve, you can send them to that email address as well. Forgot that. You've already seen it. Yes, do. <laughs> yes, you've all seen it. So make sure you send us your thoughts on Adam Eve special one shot. What I don't know. Premiere, uh, selects. Choose a name. Um, but we'll be back early next year, according to, uh, Amazon. Uh, yes, early next year, but anywhere in the first six months is technically still early mm-hmm. uh, to continue our coverage for Invincible Season 2. Um, if you like Invincible, 
We just finished our coverage of the boys' spin-off, Gen V. Uh, it's very similar. We discussed it. It's, it's like the boys. It's it's, it's a, an adult live-action superhero show, mm. uh, but with more college. If you liked Euphoria and you like superheroes, you will like Gen V. If you like the boys and college, you will like Gen V. If you like good TV, you will like Gen V. Uh, so strongly suggest checking that out as well. And hopefully, if you like podcasts, check out our podcast about Gen V too. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'm sorry, yeah that makes more sense too. <laughs> Watch the show, listen to us. Watch the show, listen to us. That's how it works. <laughs> uh, if you like The God of Stories, Loki, Season 2, make sure you've checked out all of our coverage there. We recently wrapped that up, as mm-hmm. did the show. So check out all of the episodes when you watch it. Listen to it. Tell us your thoughts. Did you like how it ended? Did you not? Tell us more. It will be a good one. And as we've already said, we'll be back next week with our review of the Adam Eve special. Mm -hmm. And we'll be back in the future as well for some of our wrap-ups for all of our quizzes Yes, uh, that we have to do as well. So, yes, we'll be waiting for Mr. Harrison to fly back to our universe after we finish our Adam Eve. He is traveling at the moment. So when he is back, we will get it all done. But more importantly, we will be discussing Adam Eve's origin next week. Absolutely looking forward to that next week. And we do have some more animated goodness coming up uh, later on in the year when What If returns for the nine episodes of its second season. We have no idea how we're going to be covering it. They start releasing on the 22nd of December, one a day for nine days at exactly the time when we're all traveling. Um, so I I don't know exactly how we're going to be able to cover it, but we will uh, we will work out a way as we always yes, do. Uh, we do, but it may not be what a day for nine days over the uh, the festive period. <laughs> no, because of that that would require at this point uh, you editing on Christmas Day. Yeah, and uh, that's never that's not going to happen. Well, I'm not going to be folks. at my computer uh, that day. I'm not even going to yeah. be in my house uh, or the country. Uh, at that yeah. time so <laughs> so all problems but we will overcome we will figure a way mm. we will let of course let you our audience know how we will cover it when we have figured it out absolutely uh, once we know thanks so much for joining us fellow guardians we'll be back next time looking forward to speaking to you yes thank you so much and from everyone here at tv podcast industries keep watching keep listening and keep being invincible bye